Hi, I am Paul Chartier and this is Heart of Gold and in the month of October we are celebrating the Breeders' Cup and we will have on equine guests uh, on the program, Terry Meeks with the Jockey Guild. Welcome. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it for having me. Terry, you brought a video with you which we're going to look at right now and then we'll come back and talk about the Jockey Guild. Sounds okay? good. Here's the video. I ride. 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 I ride, baby. Every time we climb into the saddle, we follow our dreams. Danger rides with us every day in every race. The Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund supports those whose careers were ended by riding accidents. But despite their catastrophic injuries, they remain hopeful. Courageous and inspiring. Please join the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Along with the horse racing industry and our great fans. And supporting the athletes who ride and those who no longer can. That kind of sums up part maybe of the Jockey Guild. Tell people a little bit about the Jockey Guild and why you were formed and what you do, Terry. Well, the Jockey's Guild um, was established, this is the 75th year of the Jockey's Guild. It, it was established in 1940 by the Eddie R. Carroll's, Johnny Longdon's, and you know, what transpired over all the years was, um, it's about respect, earning respect, better conditions, whether it be in the jocks room, whether it be insurance um, for the athletes when they got injured. Um, and just, you know, it, it tr transcended into paramedics, doctors, uh, better equipment. You know, for the first, oh, we've had 154 fatalities um, since 1940. And since the last, since 1990s, those fatalities each decade has gone down significantly. Mm -hmm. And that's by working with the industry, and you can see the, the graph up there now, the fatalities by decade. Um, they've gone down, and that's by working with the industry and the industry buying in because it not only helps the individual jockeys, but also the exercise riders, the racetracks, the horsemen, the insurance, the workers' comp. So by us working together, it is paid off in dividends in many ways. And to take a step back a little bit, let's talk about you and your background in the equine world, and then we'll get m more in depth and specific about the jockey. You've been in the business how many years? Uh, all my life. I'm third generation. Uh -huh. the, man or, the man that raised my father trained horses around mid in the Midwest, in Arkansas, in Chicago, in Illinois. Um, my dad was a jockey agent for over 50 years. He had early fires his book for 28 and a half years. So I grew up as a, I had a jock's book one summer um, when I was during, in college, um, made 400 hours. The people I knew, all my friends or trainers stopped talking to me, so the next year I went to the racing office. So I made sure the trainers that I was friends with had to talk to me. So then I became assistant race secretary at various racetracks in the country, including Keeneland. Um, in 1979, I got the job as race secretary at Calder for 14 years. During the last, of the, the last three years of that, I was race secretary, director of racing at Gulfstream. Went to New York, Naira, um, in 1993 as Vice President of Racing, Vice President of Operations, and then I want to become President of Naira. And I was there for 12 years and then came to work for the NTRA, um, Special Assistant to the Commissioner, and then did a consulting business for a couple of years. And then during that time, um, I was approached by Johnny Velasquez and Edgar Prado if I'd be interested in working with the Guild. And hmm. so that was in September 2007. I said one condition that you have to work with the industry mm. and the jocks have done that. From what you saw when you grew up through your dad and what you saw, how were the jockeys treated back then? Well, I think it's, you know, it's definitely since the 1940s, it, since I grew up, you know, I think it's, it's been, you know, it's difficult. They're independent contractors. Mm -hmm. um, they're, a lot of people think the jockeys make too much money. Mm -hmm. Some make very, you know, Javier Castellano is my son-in-law, so he's done very well. But I would just take Ramon Dominguez, who was injured three years ago. He was the Eclipse Award best rider in the country for three straight years. Uh, the day before he got the Eclipse Awards, he fell at Aqueduct, had a brain injury, and it was told he could never ride again. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, you know, 36 years old at the time, I think, and he's got a wife and, and two kids, and what's he going to do for the rest of his life? Mm -hmm. and, and Ramon saved his money. But, um, you know, I think, but 
as I said, probably 10, 15 percent of the jocks do very well. Majority, like everybody else, you know, struggles. You know, same thing with trainers and mm -hmm. owners and stuff. You know, the top 10 or 15 percent do very well, and everybody else, it's tough on the industry. And you know, our industry's been in, it's been tough, and you know, up until. You know, Kentucky's done very well the last couple of years, but there for a point, everybody was concerned about the well-being Kentucky racing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were thinking about West Virginia and Indiana mm -hmm. and, you know, New York and stuff. But, you know, Kentucky, I think in the last couple of years, because of instant racing, you know, Kentucky Downs, which helped Ellis Park, which now Keelan and Red Miles open up their um, instant racing at the Red Mile, and hopefully it does good and increase purses and we get, tra we get new owners into the game. But going back to the jocks, um, you know, I think, you know, you, you, the history of the guild, the past presidents of the guild, Bill Shoemaker, Jerry Bailey, Gary Stevens, Pat Day, well, Johnny Velasquez now is the chairman of the guild, they're all very well respected mm -hmm. and, you know, and basically want to do everything they can to promote the industry. And, but I think with Johnny, you know, Johnny Velasquez is aces and basically wants to work and promote the game so I think that helps in getting everybody to buy into working together and what can we do to help the game and I think that's come a long way. It seems that now they seem more of a team where in my impression earlier years many decades ago it was just a free-for-all in fighting for rides and maybe not being respected with the purses and insurance and that type of thing. It seems like a very different world today. Well, the one thing, you know, it's the one thing, the first thing I try to do in 2007 is get the increase in losing mount fees taken, you know, and so to get respect of, of the new office and stuff or mm -hmm. myself and stuff, we've been able to increase the losing mount fees. Um, Explain that. If a jock doesn't finish first, second, or third, uh -huh. you know, in the past he might have got fi anywhere from thirty dollars to fifty or sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. You have to pay your agent, you know, twenty-five percent. You mm -hmm. have to pay your valet five percent. So, you know, depending on, you're probably taking home twenty-five, thirty dollars, you know, per before race. taxes per race. Yeah. So, if a jock rides one or two horses a day, he's not make much money. Yeah. He's got to pay for his tolls or gas and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Working horses in the morning for free and mm -hmm. stuff. So um, we've been able to increase the losing mount fees, but you know, so we got into it's more like the jockeys guild is now more as a, a voice within our industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does have got a long way to go, absolutely. But I think the jocks, when you have the Johnny Velasquez of the world, and you know the Gary Stevens and Mike Smith and and Javier and Ramon Dominguez, as I mentioned, you know they want to work with the industry to help promote and be. I think the jocks could be more of a voice in a be just like any other, just like the NBA or, or the football leagues, the Derek Jeters of the world. Um, they could be more of a face of the industry mm -hmm. and to help promote it. You've got like this year, racing has been very fortunate with American Pharaoh. You know, American Pharaoh is going to retire at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. You know, you go through every once every five years, you have your stars, Zenyatta, Secretariat, and stuff, which I think is great for our industry. Mm -hmm. But you know you've got you've got the Mike Smiths and the Gary Stevenses and the Johnnies and whoever else it may be. Rosie Napravnik, mm -hmm. what a great face she was mm -hmm. for our industry. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's affiliated with old friends and stuff like that. So we all need to be our industry needs to work together, closer together, help promote our sport, and I think which is very important. Uh, Terry, in terms of safety, what what have you done? What's the guild done to promote safety? in the recent years? Well, you know, ever from top to bottom, um, better helmets. You know, we're looking, you know, the safety vest. We're looking at the safety vests. You know, we talked about the permanently disabled. Um, we talked about the fatalities have gone down. I think it's, there's a picture that I, that was out there. Um, Edgar Prado fell last year at Gulfstream, about a year ago, well, 10 months ago now. His helmet was caved in. Mm -hmm. And basically the helmet saved his life. We're seeing a lot more concussions, mm -hmm. you know, head in, you know, um, so we're, we're working on a, trying to get a better helmet. Mm -hmm. Safety vests, we're still seeing, you know, the permanently disabled since it's been established in 2006, there's been 70 people, 71 qualified for um, the permanently disabled, which only gets $1,000 a month mm -hmm. 
with no guaranteed funding. Mm. Our funding comes for you know autograph sessions and bake sales and karaoke's. So you know, Mr. Farish has been on the is on the board and he's contributed a significant amount of money. But um, so we've seen a lot of head injuries, paralysis, spinal cord injuries. So we've been working to get better safety equipment. Uh, Pre-race exams, we worked on the horses being monitored each the morning of the race. Mm -hmm. We're making mon man mandatory basically that horses are pre-race examined, and we can see, uh, you know, how these horses are, so they're not breaking down in mm -hmm. the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, the on-track accident policies has increased to a million dollars if it's not a workers' comp state. And so if, you know, we've had a number of jocks, whether it be Renee Douglas and Michael Strait that got hurt mm -hmm. in Illinois and paralyzed, mm -hmm. you know, they both had spinal cord injuries and head injuries and their stays and their period of time, it cost well over a million dollars probably. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been able to do that. So um, medication, race day medication, trying to weed out the race day, except for right now there's a lot of things going on with some medication and Lasix, but you know, the Guild has taken a stance over the years that Lasix is good for horse, prevents bleeding. So we think that's important and, mm -hmm. you know, we're willing to work with everybody to, to find out if there's anything better than Lasix down the road to prevent the bleeding mm -hmm. and from horses collapsing, whatever it may be. But so we worked on from, like I said, medication, the insurance, the safety equipment, the hel helmets, the um, safety vests, safety rails. You see a lot of um, new rails in the United States. Um, it's got from Australia. Um, from Europe, they're more flexible. If a mm -hmm. horse hits it, bounces off. It's Th this, we could talk about this for probably another three days, and I think people that go to Keeneland see a snapshot of the horse world, but don't really know the background of what you've shared. Do you have a website that people can go to to find out more information about the, the guild? The jockeysguild.com. Jockeys okay. And we have also a Facebook page you know, the other things that we're working on is, you know, this month is Children's Cancer Awareness. Mm -hmm. Jockeys throughout the United States have gone to hosp children's hospitals and visit the kids and put the kids, we bring goggles, um, put a smile on the kid's face. Um, it helps the riders, their image, but also helps our industry in it. But it, the main thing, it helps the kids. Terry Meeks, it's been an honor to have you on during Breeders' Cup month. I know that you represent fine, fine athletes in these jockeys, and they are fine people and great representatives of the industry and of the sport, and thank you very much for being on. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Paul Chartier. We'll be right back with another equine group in a few minutes. Thank you very much.